So welcome to this cafe. Some more people may join um, in the coming minutes, but let's uh, open our doors, doors wide and open for um, Sandra, Annie, Sophie and Vicky uh, joining us today as speakers and inviting us to a provoking uh, conversation, I hope, about uh, global walking, global sound walking, remote co collaboration and um, creating and working together in a post-pandemic time uh, and as well um, going beyond the borders of the physical. Uh, so um, we are at a talk that follows in the wake of the uh, Catalonia encounters uh, where we have um, asked the artists and researchers to send us a remote uh, contribution in the form of an audio walk or an audio paper. With an audio paper we were thinking about a um, sound piece that um, uh, invites you to walk and to listen to a content uh, letting you think about what is happening around you. Uh, specifically asking uh, to um, uh, send us works that were made in a, a collective, a collaborative way. Uh, we had uh, Sandra and Annie, uh, Sophie and uh, Vicky uh, sending in their uh, beautiful work along with uh, other people which will uh, be invited on, on a later moment to discuss their collaboration and uh, their uh, creative approach towards this uh, format of walking, working together and uh, uh, sharing. So, Sophie um, Cabot lives in Canada and Vicky Vergu lives in Greece and in the UK. Uh, they are both women, artists, thinkers and walkers with a deep interest in the intelligence of nature and they have met online during COVID. This unexpected encounter has led them to a strong connection and to even more than one work together and today they will talk about uh, their contribution to the walking encounters in Catalonia. Uh, Annie and uh, Sandra, and Annie Martin and Sandra Cohen are from Alberta in Canada and they have uh, collaborated on recent projects based in their shared interest in sound walks, contemplative practice, walking as an art practice and connection with place. Their sound work they present today they grew out of these collaborations and out of mutual respect and love for the nature and vegetal worlds. Uh, so after uh, Sophie and Vicky, who will first uh, talk about their work and then Annie and Santa, we will have a talk with them about remote relationships and relationships and creative collaborations via sound working in our now almost post-pandemic world. I would like to invite you, uh, Vicky and Sophie, to tell a bit more about your collaboration. Okay, hi. Mer. Thalassa. O. Nero. Sauvage. Erimia. Vastitude. Aperadocini. The sun is getting lower. Whispers of insects, microscopic mosquito bites mixed with the salty smell and the periodic wave sound. I'm taking a breath during the long hot walk in a planet that, although it looks so big, it is also almost not. I'm paying attention to the nearest sounds of waves, clear and loud while background whispers of a chatting sea are enriching the experience. An amazing orchestra of unpredictable, unbroken, unplanned music from water instruments, directed by the Maestro of Magic. You are far, but you are close. With your ears, I can hear the wild Atlantic Ocean, while you, through me, can see the blue Mediterranean Sea. We are walking on the planet, we are walking in between. Time slows down, freezing the waves for half an hour, hour, half hour, being present in togetherness, in tune in seascapes of the North and South Hemisphere. Sensibility. To be in contact with Vicky 
open my attention to the sensible life in me and around me. Vicky is mixed with all, with all nature, time, images of Greece, overlapping my own reality with past, present, and future, with sand, water, plants, animals, rocks, sounds, sounds of the roads, sounds of the waves. I merge with the space. To exist, the plant has to merge with the world, and it cannot do so other than in a form of a seed. Intentions are seeds. If a seed allows an image to become destiny, a space of total life, a spatial temporal horizon. This is our physical distance. Well, I'm Vicky, and uh, I want to say a few things about myself. I was born in Greece, in a small town near Athens. I moved. To, I'm reading as well because it's difficult for me to just um, talk about myself. <laughs> I moved to England for 20 years, and during COVID, I returned to Greece. I currently share my time between Greece and the UK, as uh, Gerrit mentioned before. I'm a visual artist inspired by my rural surroundings and the interconnectedness of um, of nature. And uh, I'm doing drawing, painting, film, photography, installation, voice recording, and writing. Um, my strong connection with water has been applied to most of my work, inspired by its elusive and changeable nature. For years, water has been one of the elements I was drawn to because of its flux and flow, continuity, and a timeless reminder of ephemerality. I walk alone in new areas spending time sketching, being, and emerging with the place. I explore nature's continu continuing transformation. I observe and feel the interconnection between elements. I discover or imagine stories carried from the stone trees and the hundred faces of the sea. I, cre I create invisible threads in this shared world full of historical memories. All these experiences exist because I'm related to these elements creating new stories. My thread is other humans to share the story of magic with me. So I'm Sophie, I'm born in Gaspésie in, on the Atlantic coast and I'm based in Montreal, Quebec. I studied uh, visual art also in Montreal. I began as a photographer learning the analogic approach. In 2016, I realized a master degree in art and pedagogy. Until then, I continue my studies and research creation in a doctoral program at University of Quebec in Montreal. Uh, my visual uh, artwork integrates relational, social action, and walking. Uh, collaboration takes an important place in all of my projects, and I focus on presence, dialogue, movement between my individual practice and uh, collective co-creation. From action, I realize photography, sounds, writing, and drawing. I walk in a geopoetic approach, which means I am crossing the place for what it is. And I try to be open to the sensible state that emerge from it. Encounters with human and every life element are, in, are important in the process. My media change in response to the situation and the context. Every work is a new narrative co-creation with the world I interact with. And I can tell a few things about the project uh, that we had sent. It was called In Between Distance, which you will slowly explain what it was about. And, but it's a collaborative sound piece that uh, was created purely from our online communication. Um, so it refers to a synchronized, non-synchronized, and post-synchronized meditative walking between the northern and southern hemisphere. We will explain that later. Having shared this unique experience, we deeply feel that there is no distance and no time of any kind. And um, I'm going to display a short film of the footage of different images that were taken during that time, and, and a very short, tiny little film, but it's like one minute, a few seconds actually. 
uh, within this um, film. Um, when I say film is a slideshow, and while this is running, we will be talking to you about how we met and what this collaboration is about. Uh, in the process of the encounter and the creation. It, uh, during the first lockdown, we had both participating at an OICA seminar led by Rich Blondo. OICA reached a community of artists and scientists with the goal to activate the phenomenon of ecological intelligence. We had both exploring current issues of the contemporary world, climate change, environmental disorder, both looking to the part of a large, uh, to, the, to be part of a larger group to share our philosophy and ideas. We wanted to create bonds which will have an impact on our artist practice and the people around us. We strongly believe in the power of collaboration and ideas and exchange. We are artists and not scientists, but as human beings, we emerge with our surroundings. We are feeling the link with nature. We observe natural phenomena. We research and exchange knowledge and experiences. But after we said that, how can we as artists communicate our understanding of interconnectedness to others through creativity? We were invited by OICA to present our creative process to a small group. We proposed a remote walk. It was an online creative action called Walking Connections. The group grew to 20 people from different parts of the world with different artistic practices. And only a few of them were walkers. We had a great time and already we noticed in this specific connection, that this uh, we noticed that this this specific connection <laughs> needed an open attitude. Yes, it's rolling. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Oh, okay. 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 Thanks, Sophie. So, um, the col I want to talk about the collaboration for the audio paper. These are images actually of me, Sophie, in Zoom in various of Zoom meetings. So after that, um, the group event that Sophie mentioned, we decided to continue our collaboration and uh, started meeting regularly online to explore time, space, and the concept of distance. We discovered we had many things in common, both women, artists, thinkers, and walkers, having a deep interest in the intelligence or, uh, of our surroundings. Sophie was born in, by the sea, but now she needs eight hours to reach it. For the project, she walked in different places, the, the Atlantic Ocean in summer and the large, long St. Lawrence River in winter. Vicky was born in a, river down, in a river town and currently lives close to the sea. She travels over the seas between Greece and England. Vicky walked in South Crete by the Libyan Sea, as well as a Cretan mountain river in different seasons. Water was a connection between the two places we lived, as well as a natural um, element that separated us. Water represents fluidity, change, constant move, and transportation. Uh, we could say that we were rarely communicating verbally. We talked a few minutes before the walk and at the end. Even once we experimented having no communication at all. We just followed our plan of date and time, trusting the presence of each other. Sometimes we plan a meeting right after the walk, after coming back home. The energy coming from sharing our walking session with the other was an evidence of the connection. In August 2021, after the walk, we were surprised to discover that we had both unplanned playtime during our walking practice. For example, I play with a piece of wood in the sand and Vicky with a red stone. We have only communicated in distance and even if we have never met physically, we experiment synchronicity in situations.
in the beginning it was exciting to be able to walk with another human being during the isolation of the pandemic. We planned walking in synchroni synchronizing time, morning in Canada, evening in Greece. Eight hours difference in winter time, seven hours in summertime. We decided to both be, be silent for these walks with as limited contact as possible. During my walking, I was meditating, allowing time to emerge with my surroundings, to stop being an observer of the place, but another alive creature between others, visible or invisible. Sophie was also part of this magical moment through my thought. She was present in my thoughts. I was talking to her. I was holding this invisible thread like an overseas and overland bridge. Both our intentions were there, walking together with, with each other's thought. There was no distance. There is no distance. As a conclusion of the uh, in-between distance uh, experiment, we explore meditation and ecological intelligence by details such as the lines, the colors, the temperature, silence, sounds, feeling of our body in the space, the movement of life, human connectedness between us and natural surroundings. We also explore as, a, as artists complicity in the process and connection with the medium, mostly photography, sounds, drawing, and poetry. Walking is a universal way for encounter and connection. We are grateful to the time given to us during the pandemic lockdown, which allowed us to make this collaboration possible. A disaster can hold surprises. We're also grateful to OICA and the Walking Artists Group, and especially the organizers of Walking Arts Encounters in Catalonia, Gert, Andrew, and Babak, that you all made this, um, this, this presentation possible. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see a question coming up, uh, Fred um, uh, put mm -hmm. a question in the, in the chat. Uh, so. Um, he says uh, that he's curious how remote sensing gave you the opportunity to discover remote species you did not know yet. And also, if you discover the continuity between some species here and there, maybe while we are waiting for Sandra, if you have anything to share about that. Um, Sophie and Vicky, that would be welcome. You can read the question as well in the chat if you. Yeah. So, Fred, you're asking how remote sensing gave us the opportunity to discover a remote PC. I don't know that word. Do you mean species? Remote that, species. Uh, we didn't know Animal yet. Or plant. You did not know yet, but uh, you discovered um, through the senses. Well, we were more trying oh, to connect with the land. Oh, Sophie? Oh, okay. Uh, we discover or rediscover in a, a new, uh, with the new unlighting. I'm not sure I really understand the question, the first part, I mean. Uh, I, I kind you, of you understand. Can you hear me? That. You can yes, we can hear you a lot and clear, Fred, so you can ask yeah. a question maybe. Yeah, my question is, uh, I understand that you discover the place of the other through the senses of the other. Yeah. So, Vicky, you discover, uh, and, uh, and, yeah, um, Sophie's location through her senses and through the images, and I, I was wondering if you discover the species, a plant or a bird, or tree you did not know yet uh, through her perception and also i would ask the same question to to sophie and the other question would be if you discovered some animals or plants who are present in both locations as a continuity in nature 
I will say for me, not, not really. Uh, the attention was more, not specifically on species and um, uh, we never send picture to, to let the other discover the species, exactly. Uh, but the connection with the surrounding during the walk was kind for me, uh, kind of more open, more actuate, more, um, the, that's kind of more precise, knowing that I was walking in the same time with uh, somebody else. Uh, it activates um, my sense differently, I would say. But I don't think I precisely discover a new, because I walk in place I already know, uh, but it doesn't mean that I cannot discover uh, something new. Uh, but I work in Quebec in place that I already know, yeah. But the walk for me was, was different, uh, yeah. Yeah, for me it was not so much focusing on on uh, on uh, discovering something. It was about connecting and uh, the dialogue, uh, an invisible dialogue uh, with each other. I mean, I could very often imagine she's really miles and miles away, uh, and she's with me. And I think this allowed more a vast connection with the landscape I was in. So I could see the sky, I could see, maybe the detail was not species, but, you know, sort of individual clouds or specific waves. Or um, like we mentioned when we were reading, um, Sophie discovered a piece of wood and she played with it. And the same day, I discovered the red stone that took my attention. And this, this was a species, you know, this was almost like a species. It, has, it, it had its own life. I hope this uh, re replies to the question a bit, Fred. That uh, sounds like a beautiful um, answer and a beautiful question. <laughs> so let's uh, give it a, a, again a try. And then I see that there are more questions in the chat, uh, but let's come back to them after Sandra and uh, Annie have talked about their work. Um, give it a try, Sandra. Let's see. Yes, there we are. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for having us. Andy and I are really grateful to have been part of the Walking Art and Relational Geographies Conference in Catalonia, although we wish we'd been there in person, of course, and now part of Soundwalk September and this panel discussion. Um, we're really honored to be included in the work of Walk, Listen, Create, and would like to thank you, Geert, and Babak, and Andrew, and Yanis, and everyone involved for all of your dedicated work, which you do so graciously. And thanks also to Sophie and Vicky for your beautiful work and your presentation. I really enjoyed it. So um, Andy and I would like to acknowledge, first of all, that we're coming to you today and we have done all of our walking for this project on land that is the traditional territorial land of the Blackfoot Confederacy. And that um, the Siksikitsitapi people, the Blackfoot Confederacy, have inhabited and cared for this land since time immemorial. We're in Lethbridge, which is a small city in southern Alberta, in Canada, in the prairies. And our, our, all of our walking for Being With Trees, this project that we are working on this summer, has been done in the river valley that cuts through the town. This valley has high bluffs and rolling hills or coolies on each side, and the Old Man River flows through it. Our walks took place among cottonwood groves in this valley. Um, above the river valley in the prairies, there are very few indigenous trees, not many trees grow that weren't planted. But the cottonwood trees grow uh, down in the river valleys in this part of Alberta. So um, Annie and I are both settlers in this place where we live now. We both work at the University of Lethbridge where I'm a librarian and Annie is an art professor. And we've worked together on several walks over the past couple of years through kind of throughout the pandemic. I feel like this walking collaboration did start uh, during the pandemic. Um, very different 
from Sophie and Vicky. We live in the same town. We work here. We live here. And we met and walked physically together throughout the planning and the recording. And, um, and we led the walk in person here in town as well. So it was a really different experience, um, not, you know, the distance was not great and was not technologically mediated as a collaboration in the same way, apart from the recording part and then um, having that, that audio walk available uh, to you through the, uh, through the conference website. So I'd like to briefly describe the walk. So those of you who haven't seen it or heard it um, know what, what uh, what we were doing. So it came about through our mutual interest in contemplative practices and in walking as both a contemplative and an art practice. And from our respect or even reverence, I'd say, for trees and for other plants and the land itself. We presented the walk as a self-guided audio walk at the conference in July. And then last week, we led it again in person um, here in the River Valley. So all the photos that you're seeing on your screen, finally, are from the walk this summer. So either um, the walk that we led or the, the walks we took when we were planning or when we were recording. And they're all in the same general area in these cottonwood groves near the Old Men River. So the idea of the walk was to create opportunities to develop relationships with trees by slowing down, by spending time with them and paying close attention to them. The walk consisted of four contemplations. The first was about sensory perception and it focused on sensing an individual tree through seeing it closely, listening closely, through touch and through smell. The second contemplation was uh, about, um, I'm just going to stop sharing because our uh, slides went through really quickly. So the second contemplation was about really sensing the living being of the tree. So laying our hands on a tree and contemplating the, the life force in it, so the water and the sap flowing through it and cultivating a sense of gratitude for the, tr the way that trees endlessly give life and give, give so many things to the environment and other beings. The third contemplation was about the apparently empty space in between the person, yourself, and a tree at some distance, and contemplating how full and alive that space really is. And the, even in even in the fact that um, there's a constant exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide that's happening between us, the human, and the tree. And the fourth contemplation was a moving contemplation where people were invited to wander aimlessly among the trees and let themselves be moved intuitively by just being among the trees and tuning into their, their movement and their presence. Um, so maybe I'll turn it over to Annie now, uh, and she can talk a little bit more about about <clears throat> the ideas behind the project. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sandra. Um, I wanted to come out right away with a full disclosure that um, a, that in addition to sharing a, a love of walking as a as a as a research practice as a as an art practice in itself, um, Sandra and I. Uh, are also uh, fellow meditators um, with quite a deep meditation practice. Um, and that, that fact, strangely, I think enabled and enables us to trust some very vulnerable kinds of experience that involve um, Really releasing self-consciousness, I think, is, is, is part of it, and, and being comfortable enough with each other to talk about um, a kind of inspiritedness of plants, of the land, of water, of air, in a, in a way that um, 
is is difficult to do with a lot of people um, in the sense that th th right away we snap to um, a sort of, well, we need scientific proof or else you're, 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 you're losing your mind, right? We, I think we're, we're, we're probably all familiar with that kind of sense of, of needing justification, which is very much a Western, a Western uh, philosophical kind of framework. Um, so that meditative practice and was, it has formed a basis for also for our, the, our work together. Um, I had been doing a lot of reading uh, on plant sentience and vegetal being and thinking, reading people like um, Michael Martyr, who's at the University of Basque Country and has collaborated with Lucie Riguere, who's in France, in Paris, and uh, Western philo philosophers um, trying to get at the possibility of, 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 of a kind of plant intelligence um, and also, by extension, more than human intelligences, fungal networks, and you know, there's many, many branches of this. It's critical life studies is sort of the general term for the field. So I've been doing a lot of reading and finding that something was missing, um, that there was no um, real capacity to drop the idea of human exceptionalism and to decenter the human. And we. I, you know, with some irony, I think we really found, we began to find, both Sandra and I, that that connection existed in indigenous knowledge and worldview. It was absolutely matter of fact. Plants have spirit. Bam. In fact, plants are our elders. They came first. We are like little children running around breaking things, and the plants are like, oh, you know, we're watching out for you. And then literally they are, right? So those connections started to, to, to fall into place for us. And we thought, we need, to, we need to learn to think differently. And not just think, we need to learn to feel differently and act differently and experience differently. And we need, we need help. <laughs> you know, the, 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 <clears throat> the, the Western framework of, of the tree being a resource that we could cut down and burn or build a house with, um, that that this kind of framework of othering the tree as a vegetal, in a derogatory way, a vegetal being, like with no brain, it was so strong, we needed assistance. And this is really coming out of a kind of, I'm speaking for myself, but I'm extending it, I'm projecting it to Sandra as well, that we really wanted to, to, to breach that, um, that separation that we felt was really ingrained in us. And the way to do that was going to be through um, adapting some meditative practices that we had already experienced, that were come from very deep ancient lineages, um, and and using those same kinds of contemplative approaches to really feel that connection and 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 acknowledge the intelligence and 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 inspiritedness, sentience uh, of the of a tree. So that was our. A kind of a, um, our, um, our, our question and our, our impetus. I think I've said, I've said a lot. So then the question was, well, how are we going to do that? And we did that through walking, through conversation, um, through reflection, testing things out on each other. We would walk and say, okay, I'm going to try and lead this meditation practice for you is you tell me what happens and, and you know Sandra would do the same with me um, and that's that's um, kind of our, our method of, was really practice practical and and um, seeing what would happen and I just wanted to say one more thing double back and then I'll, we can kind of open it up um, that that um, the, really the practice that I've been doing I've been involved in since 2004 in the form of listening walks. So I've been leading listening walks. I'm a visual and sound artist. And I have to acknowledge that I learned the practice of listening walk from the artist Hildegard Vesterkamp, who's based in Vancouver and was part of the World Soundscape Project. So I kind of came at it from sound. And Sandra's invitation when we started to collaborate to open that up to include the other senses really laid the groundwork for for the current the current work, so it's 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 a it's kind of an expansion, if you will, of of listening walk practice. Thank you.
Sandra, do you want to add now things I might have missed? I know that was great. I don't, I don't think I have anything to add, but what is striking me, um, after listening to Sophie and Vicki and thinking about what we've done, um, I mean, interconnection is obviously a, an overarching theme, um, human and non-human and, you know, the land and the beings. Um, and I'm really curious about this idea of, of connection through distance, which I feel like, I mean, Sophie and Vicki, I think this might be a question for you. I, you clearly experienced this sense of connection through distance through your project. And I'm, we were also seeking connection, interconnection, acknowledgement and experience of our interconnection with trees and this land around us that, that we're walking on. Um, but the way we're doing it is through very like sensory immediate contact. And I think my curiosity is, is that something that's even possible without sensory immediate contact for an interspecies or a human to land uh, some understanding of interconnection, if that makes any sense at all. It's just, that's the thing that's rolling around in my head right now. Um, and I'd love to hear what Vicki or Sophie think about those ideas. Uh, I don't have, uh, thank you so much for your presentation. I like it a lot. And uh, when I first hear your four contemplation uh, elements, uh, <laughs> I was amazed with the space between the person and the tree, as you just said. Um, I don't know. I, uh, I think we can. We, we will continue to explore this. We don't have all the answer. <laughs> we, we have a couple walk together, but. Uh, for me, I was in contact with uh, the with the element around me, and that was the surprise. And even if I'm not so close to Vicky, um, we exchange some, uh, as as we say, synchronicity. Or it's not always synchronicity, but um, we had some, um, yeah, some connection in the ideas. For sure, we talked before and after, so it helps too. But uh, I will say about this that the first uh, experiment we have with the walking connection, there were uh, around 20 people uh, walk with us. That was uh, two years ago in March, uh, February or March. Uh, and the connection was there also because uh, people was exploring uh, ground and distance but mainly the ground and the pictures and words they come through the phone and uh, uh, there was a link uh, and we had a talk after uh, the 20, 20 people together so i think the attitude and the the capacity of uh, to be in contact in a kind of meditative uh, posture or attitude, I think it helps to uh, to be in contact. It's a starting point to 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 be relaxed and to relax in this kind of experiment and be open to what can happen, what we feel, and be confident to not analyze the sensation but just let it go. Let it be, I mean, picky. <laughs> um, I think you almost said everything, but I think what it matters is the intention. It's what, when you focus and you said you had, that's what I want. And then you mentioned, um, Sandra and Annie, you mentioned that too, it's the trust. People who meditate, they have this trust that things will happen, magic is there. So if you spend time meditating, you know that this will lead you somewhere. It's, it's a journey. And I think um, all four of us have experienced that, uh, experienced that in our collaborations. And uh, that's what I wanted to add in this question with Sophie. Uh, and, um, and connection, you all said the same word, interconnectedness and connection, connection, you know. 
that's what I wanted to add for this. Yeah, the title of your presentation uh, could be uh, also in between distance. <laughs> in this shorter distance, but still. <laughs> <laughs> the trees. <laughs> nice. No, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Vicky, Sophie, uh, Sandra, and Annie. And actually, your um, introductory question, Sandra, was spot on, um, reflecting about um, the materiality of connection and, and, and the need of the senses, specifically after the COVID uh, period where we all connected on, where we all were looking for new ways to connect. Um, and uh, the, the whole, the, the, the whole topic is, is, is of course, much older than, 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 than the pandemic, and uh, people um, uh, as well that, that, that are among us, like, like Inke and Fred, are already for um, uh, a longer time um, interested in how you can uh, walk together and be together um, the, beyond the, the, the physical presence. And then other people, maybe like Jess, they are really with the feet on the ground and take people um, the, beyond the limitations of their own bodies and uh, um, exploring, like say, the, the very body is sensory and uh, physical experience of, of being in, inside of the landscape. And that these two worlds come together um, is um, something that maybe now is more more obvious uh, than, than before and as opens as well new uh, uh, the, there's a uh, new ways of uh, of walking um, including technology not as a means on itself but as an extension of uh, uh, of our senses uh, the, um, and, uh, thank you so much for, the, 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 for this this beautiful for the moment. Uh, actually, the whole Soundwalk September is a series of talks, and I have the feeling that we landed somehow in the eye of a storm, where we are suddenly in a moment of uh, being. And uh, that's uh, but before um, uh, we. Uh, uh, I go on. Uh, maybe somebody of you has a question, a feedback, a comment. Uh, on what is said. Uh, I have a comment, but uh, I let the, the others mm -hmm. uh, talk before yes. yes. Sure, uh, uh, Sophie. Uh, Jess, I have seen as well uh, after uh, Sophie has. Uh, okay, so but I, um, Annie, you talk about the, um, we need to um, to have a new new kind of connection, new kind of uh, seeing the world around us. And I totally agree. We have to um, kind of decolonize the the minding, the Western minding, and and I think um, experiences like the one we propose today, or some others in Walking September, uh, are new ways to do it, and uh, to have new uh, narratives about the contact we have with nature. Even if we don't understand everything, I think to try to um, to invent some real and very um, real and uh, authentic narratives from the our experience with uh, with nature. Mm -hmm. Thank you for uh, saying that. Thank you, Sophie. Yeah, um, I, I I think. One of the takeaways that we had after this was that we should be doing this every day. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's not a you know sort of unique, um, entertaining experience. Then we can say, oh well, that was really cool. Now let's just go on with life. You know, it was something like that actually could become a a, a, a daily practice and go deeper um, in the sense that this is what we need. Um, and you know, there are many, many versions of this kind of, of connection, but really understanding that our lives depend upon all all lives depend upon you know the the lives the lives of of the land of soil of plants of other um, beings. I think he, we we've made a, a gross error in uh, thinking that we can kind of get up get get out meet all our own needs it's a mm -hmm. yeah it's a, but but 
Thank you. Yeah, Jess, did you have to have a question? Yes, th thank you all. That was really, really interesting and um, thought provoking. And I think I'll have to go and go f for another walk and have a think about it. But <laughs> um, <laughs> the, 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 the thing that struck me was, um, and that sort of came up with the, with the, the, um, the French philosopher Michel de Sertou, uh, Soto, uh, excuse me, those French speakers for such a bad accent. Um, he, he said, uh, the thing that struck me was, he said, to walk is to lack a place. And I'm sort of struggling with the idea that you seem to be find, wanting to find a place in which, uh, and Vicky touched on it and saying that the, the place is is in between where the water flows and I really like that idea and obviously with trees trees are reliant on water you know this massive amount of water that flows so there's all these connections coming up and my question is is if that is that is so and you are telling us what has happened are you aware that you're creating new stories and when these new stories are are created um you know, referring back to the ancients that Annie was saying, um, are you are you sort of thinking, well, maybe these new stories can then develop into another story for all four of you? You said another story of the four of us? Yeah, for all all four of you, you know, you you, you, okay, you, yeah. you told us your stories, which have now become open, and they are out there. And it, are those stories then? Do those stories, because of our conversation and our linking here, become another story and another situation that the four of you could take on in a different way? I don't know. I'm just thinking, you know, thinking about this collaboration thing that you're talking about. So I think it's really interesting the connection between all of you that is water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I have, I, I don't really have an answer to that, but um, I'm kind of tingling with the connections, you know, like I'm, I'm really grateful that the four of us were, were paired together in this talk, because I think there is a lot of um, syncretism and, um, yeah, a lot of interconnections and shared ideas that could potentially lead to, I don't know, this, I guess we're creating a, another narrative right now, another story with, with this particular discussion that's happening. Um, who knows where that'll lead? I just want to add that this is happening now, isn't it? This is the narrative right here, right now. What mm -hmm. we experienced now. Uh, our four, a correction between the four of us and with all of the people here. Mm -hmm. I think this is it. Yeah, history is a co-creation language, our co-creation also. It changed, it transformed uh, all over uh, with humanity uh, running. And now it's time to change, uh, to change the narratives. Mm -hmm. As Annie so says, uh, yeah, yeah, to to change our mind with the the link we have with nature, because we we had a broke up for many century. Uh, yeah, it's time to reverse that. Okay. Right. I'm mean, just just to finish, Vicky. You 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 say that you know, uh, I'm sure you're not saying, but it came across as if you're saying, well having discussed it now that's the end of it and i'm sort of more concerned of going no this is the beginning what you're touching on is really really interesting between all four of you which wouldn't have happened if you because of the space in between wouldn't have happened unless that you were brought together in tonight so there's another bit of synchronicity going on and how you know is it something that you guys want to follow on as another story. 
Anyway, I'll finish now because you know there's lots of other people. I'll stop whispering. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Jess, uh, for this thought-provoking um, question. Anne, did you want to um, comment on that, or did you have a question? We seem to have lost Anne. Um, somebody else who wants to bring in a question or a comment? There, there's a question in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. Did the trees teach teach you anything surprising? Exactly. That was the question was of Anne. Uh, Anne, who has uh, uh, unfortunately has to go, uh, but um, uh, of course we can uh, um, can can look into the question <laughs> with pleasure. Yes, if you want to answer on that, uh, Annie. Um. Actually, Annie, do you have something for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I having spent so much time with the trees, um, we learn so much. Um, I, I, I actually started walking with cottonwoods uh, about eighteen months ago because I was preparing a presentation, a, a short video, and and kind of talk um, for um, the um, Canadian New Music Network. Uh, online symposium, and I wanted to talk about um, this this kind of question, like how how can we how can we express gratitude to beings that sustain our life? And that was that was my walking question in in, in that instance. And um, spending that much time with the trees, I just came to appreciate them so much more. I think at first I thought cottonwood trees were kind of like um, weed trees. You know, they're very soft wood. They grow and then they kind of drop their branches and they often fall down. They um, they're not like giant hardwoods or or giant coniferous trees. They're very they're very their their lives are fairly short. And I didn't I didn't feel that you know I didn't have the um, the understanding of them as these really unique contributors to this place and their importance in terms of the riparian river bottom ecosystem and just every everything they were doing. And that happened through walking and through spending time with them. But the really big revelation, I think, um, for me was that it was possible to feel kinship with with a tree. That it sound you know, it sound I, I have I this is me being self-conscious. You know, it sounds kooky, right? But it, it, we, 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 we accomplished that. We, we got to a place where we experienced, and the group of people we were walking with, um, ex experienced this sense of these are really other living beings, and and there's a deep um, joy in that. So when you're walking in the forest, you are not alone, and there's that's just a wonderful thing to know. Uh, it kind of goes against all of the deep, dark forest, scary place <laughs> mythology, um, and and it's a uh, it's a very different way to be, um, to feel true true um, companionship when when with not just trees but all all vegetal beings. Yeah, Thank um, you very much. <laughs> I had the. A very similar experience of kinship. I don't think Annie, we've really talked about this in so many words, but um, I what I discovered is that like trees are like companions, like they felt like friends, you know. And given an opportunity to interact, it's like I'm really a tree hugger. I want to go lean on it, and like you know, it, it it's like I I feel supported by these trees in a way that I hadn't uh, experienced before. So kinship is a really, that's, that's a great word for it. Uh, thank you, Sandra. Uh, there is a comment of uh, Fred in the, in the chat, actually referring to, to gratitude. Uh, the, I remember the project uh, we did with Supercluster CGMF, in which we invited people to express their gratitude to, to the land uh, by um, by choosing a particular place where they wanted to give gratitude to this place being 
uh, more than a place, but uh, a lift, uh, a lift place uh, of beings, um, non-human beings. And um, um, what, how does fit gratitude in this uh, connection? Um, um, what do we give? What can we give to to the land? Is the comment of Fred? I don't know if you want to specify more, uh, Fred. Um, Yeah, uh, the nature take care of us, so we have to take care of nature, and the more we give to nature, more nature give to us, and it's a kind of a beautiful exchange where I believe that always nature give you more that you can give, and uh, so yeah, it's always a question how I can give back uh, to nature uh, beyond the. Uh, of course, gratitude, uh, and I don't have the answer, but I think it's really good to try always uh, to give back. I think that having these experiences, we become some sort of teachers, you know, or I feel that strongly, you know, more and more. It's like... Um, a stronger need than ever to kind of um, show people what I see. Mm -hmm. You know, make people feel what I feel. Uh, and get the respect I have for nature. I, I would love everybody to have this respect. And they don't. Especially having come back to Greece after many years, been away and living in south of Crete. This is so primitive here. I mean, they, really, the cruelty. And they just don't feel anything. I, I, yeah, I feel I'm obliged to do something about it. And that's partly giving back, I think, Fred, for me, anyway. Just by being here and showing, without being angry, because I can be very angry too. You know, that's important not to be angry because nobody gets anything. <laughs> um, I also wanted to make one more comment from something before the trees have are alive being Chandra was saying you know they're, they're like creatures and I think me and Sophie felt that landscape itself was alive you know we shared about this so a moving river is alive you know a moving sky I could see the sea the waves they were talking to me it's it's these conversations it's the presence isn't it yeah Mm -hmm. Inke, please, come on. Yes, uh, well, I'm a little bit silent here because there are so many references for me uh, according to trees, but also to being together in walks, uh, especially with Sophie. We did the project and I think it was not this summer, but the summer before when we were working in the hubs. So we had these morning sessions and evening sessions, and that was really uh, in, very interesting. But I'm exploring this in with in other situations, like more performative situations, not necessarily in walking situations. And so there is, it seems at times that there is no space at all. So you're so connected, and it's very difficult to put this in words. But something that came to my mind just now is it's so difficult to, when we talk about us and nature, it's like we are separating in talking about it, we are separating ourselves from nature. And I think the basic thing is to be part of and be with be within. And also that is a very complex uh, thing because we always talk about being in something or out of something. And I think we have to, Maybe it's just the walking and the sensorial experiences that make it possible to uh, to to talk, have a discussion or a conversation without using the words. I think many times words get in our ways, and so this is where the sensorial part comes in, and also uh, doing things together without speaking and being aware of each other, doing something similar in the same time space uh, even if we are very far away from one another so just a remark 
I want to say that I remember then you uh, you proposed a work uh, a couple of years ago, uh, also a focus with um, I don't I know it was focused at one point with uh, water. Yes. Uh, yes. And it was uh, I learned a lot from this work with you. Yes, and we other, were and other people. Yeah. Yeah, well, there was, this was, was very, in the uh, Vibarais, no? So this was walking yes, bodies yeah. through in spaces. So this yeah. was inherent in the title of the walk. And uh, so we were walking as a group and we took this idea of being near the water. And we used uh, WhatsApp to communicate. And I had a kind of scenario, like different moments where we did connect. Uh, and shared photos and some thoughts. Uh, but the year after, we did something when we were in Prespas, Prespa on our minds. And uh, I decided that uh, for me it worked better not to have that much exchange during the walk, just being there uh, connected by doing and not by using so much the devices because it's for me it's difficult to do these things at the same time so the the press part on our mind was very i think we all felt very connected so that the focus was on yes. starting on this uh, uh, very much focused on the on the place where you were so focus on our feet on the ground. I asked everyone to just make one picture of the photo of, the, of their foot on the ground, feet on the ground. And then we walked uh, for, I think, about half an hour and trying to figure out where Prespa might be. And so for me, this works also like a geographical orientation. I feel like then I'm like an antenna searching for the right spot. I don't know how this was for everyone else. And then uh, after half an hour or so, I asked everyone to just look up and uh, send each other pictures of the sky. And so we felt very connected through the sky and the soil that we were sharing. And of course, there was Prespa because there were some people like Geert, he was in Prespa. And I don't know, I saw... Ah, uh, there were other people in uh, in Prespa, but Sophie, you were there, I think, too. But you were, uh, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, and Thompson was there too, and so um, there were all, also people whom I never met before. But uh, this was a very strong experience, I think. And so even if you don't meet people in the flesh, you can still feel this very powerful connection. And I think the um, we, uh, because there's a kind of universal um, experience like uh, archetype, mm -hmm. water are one of it. Uh, yes. And to f to feel the water, even if we don't have the same experience, not in the same uh, country, mm -hmm. uh, the temperature is different. Mm -hmm. uh, still, the the connection with uh, water, for example, or the ground, mm -hmm. feet on the ground. Uh, we can, uh, this is an, an universal uh, experiment. Yes. I think so. I know yes. some people never experiment the, the snow, <laughs> 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 but still, <laughs> to feel the, uh, the attraction to, uh, yes. I think it, it, it gives the, the space, the, the chance to connect also, mm -hmm. to focus on an element. Mm -hmm. Yes. But with with Vicky, we the water was a, a metaphor. We tried to to walk by uh, by the sea or by the river, but uh, sometimes it's not possible because I'm far from it. And but uh, still, the the yeah the vastitude of the environment give us uh, plenty of uh, matters to experiment. Mm -hmm. So there's many ways to make connection. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sophie. So uh, Ruland, I'm very happy that you joined us as well. Um, in your um, in your work, meditation is is as well an important part. Um, 
could you share a bit about how you approach meditative walking? Maybe? Whoa. Um, I'm not really um, go out with the uh, idea I want to walk uh, in meditation, but it most of the times just happens. And um, I feel connected. What Inke tells is that we should uh, be not talking about us and nature, but we are nature. And, and that's what I think I feel when I walk, um, that, that the separation is, is, is gone. And, um, um, and there we come on the level where you don't find so easily words for what is happening, like uh, what's mentioned before by the other presentations. That's a little attribution from my side. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, uh, the, the connection that um, we are walking, that walking is a more than human activity, actually, that uh, even walking can be extended to an to an activity that is um, go, is going beyond using your feet, uh, but actually is uh, literally you're, you're walking with the plants of your feet uh, to, to to make a, uh, an association uh, that we walk together with the landscape uh, is uh, is actually something that, that that puts walking into a perspective that we are not alone, um, and, and and anything we do. We are not alone. Uh, there's also uh, walking is not exploring. Walking is not uh, the, um, take, the taking and taking space. It, it's uh, uh, being part of, of the space around you and uh, delving into a way of, of knowing as well. You know to your feet, uh, as you said, Tani. Uh, brain is not limited to being a brain. You you you, you think with your whole body and take actually more than with your body because uh, if i once said that that um, we are like uh, 40 percent uh, 40 percent of our genetic material is uh, organic uh, what is plant based so actually we are uh, not only um, part of the so-called animal world we are as much part of the plant world and our consciousness is 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 plant based and every human activity uh, cannot be separated from uh, being with plants or even walking with plants, I do. Uh, I do like this idea that uh, 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 walking is um, um, more than than human. Um, the the way of 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 moving, of being uh, in movement and interacting. The the. I was a bit more interested in Annie in, in, in your um, uh, you thought about Michael Mander and, and his uh, plant consciousness how um, how walking relates to this uh, uh, critical plant studies and and uh, uh, plant uh, um, uh, plant philosophy uh, that is uh, developed. Is there any connection that is made with walking? I'm I'm not sure. I mean, I'm 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 really not finished with this subject area at all. I'm just getting started, so I think those connections are there to be made, and they're mm -hmm. probably being made. I think this is, I think there are people all over the all over the globe, mm -hmm. working in different ways with these questions. Mm -hmm. I, I I and and there's a blossoming, if you excuse the pun, of of literature now being published, but that probably means that that research and those questions that go back, you know, these, this, there's a need for this to, for, for more exploration of these questions and connections. I love that beautiful, I love that though, Geert, the idea that walking is more than human, is, is a more than human uh, activity or mm -hmm. action just in itself. 
exactly. And, uh, to, to my humble opinion, walking is, uh, it's the most free act by walking. Um, and, um, uh, which uh, relates us to, to our environment on a completely natural, organic, uh, on the, the undetermined uh, way, uh, beyond any, any doing and um, uh, interfering. Of course, I don't know if you agree with that, but for me, it's, it's it just uh, um, walking is by its nature always a meditative state um, and a state of being. Now, um, that um, said, um, does anyone want to have an, a last comment, a last feedback? Uh, Vicky, you wanted to say something? No, you <laughs> were. Quite late here in Greece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were just uh, fumbling your own hair, and I thought you were uh, like uh, asking uh, no, to, have, no. to have a last word. Uh, or the last silence, but the silence can speak even more than than uh, uh, than words. So um, then uh, let's fade into this uh, silence after these uh, moments of being together, connecting, uh, and um, uh, to elaborate on what Jess said, uh, actually creating new collaborations just by being together today. Uh, yes. So. Um, it was um, it was great to see you all, um, and um, uh, I look forward to see you on, on on following cafes which are coming up uh, this week. Thursday we have a cafe with uh, eight wonderful uh, women from California uh, talking about black joy uh, and uh, walking, walking as a celebration. Uh, then um, and on. Um, Sunday, there was an, a panel uh, about um, walking art encounters. Uh, so, in all its uh, aspects, with people from Belgium, from the UK, uh, uh, from um, Latin America, who are talking about their experiences in bringing people together to walk together and to create art together and talk about that. Uh, so, that will be moderated by Enzo. Uh, so, on this Thursday at the same time, next Sunday at the same time, you're very welcome to join us. And for more activities during uh, Soundwalk September. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you all. Sophie. Yes. Sophie, thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 B